Well, today I'm working on my 96 GT convertible top. Um, at some point in the past, somebody replaced the top, but they didn't replace the rear window. So now the window has developed a leak in here, and I can show you that in a little bit. Um, but it's, uh, the rear window's got to be replaced. There's no sands or busts, there's no fixing, salvaging, or whatever. So, uh, first thing's got to be done is to start the car and put all the windows down so they're not in the way. So, I'm going to do that now, and we'll get back to it. Okay, so I'm in the back of the car here, and uh, my six, two, six foot two person here um, doesn't fit too well. So uh, this is about the only way I'm going to fit back here with the seats and sideways. So I really have to get in here into the back though, and, and take this rear um, liner down from the convertible top or in the in the well. The liner's got to come down, and it, it's pretty simple. It's just right along the back. You have the heads of the bolts or the heads of the nuts, and you just kind of wiggle it around each head and the liner comes right down I take it down all the way across once that's down you can see into the trunk which uh, I had to take my trunk liner all pretty much the entire inside of the trunk out because it was leaking in and I didn't want to destroy anything but it blew out one of my amps so um, the next thing you need to do is to get a 12 point socket it's got instead of six points, 12 points, it's kind of like that. Um, it's got to be slipped over the head, the entire thing, and you just wrench all these out. Once you do that, this back part will be free. And the next thing you need to do is get yourself a uh, Torx. I put it on an extension because uh, it's a Torx 20, T20. Um, in the back corner here, you have the, the curtain edge. That's a Torx bit right there. And over here, same thing. There's a Torx in that area, so we'll take them out. So we can take these down, and then the next step would be to uh, disconnect the defroster. So I'm gonna go and do that, and then we'll go from there. All right, um, for the defroster, there's a little button you gotta push. I don't know if you can see it right there. Gotta push that in in order for this to release and come off. Otherwise you'll be pulling on it and you, know, you don't want to wreck the wiring. So that's it. All right, so I got about a half hour into taking these screws out. Um, maybe not quite that long. But uh, so once the screws are out, you know, all the, all the screws, I keep saying screws, nuts, odd shaped nuts are out. Um, we got to pry just a tiny bit. Um, because you figure as long as this car is a 96, you know, 20 years um, or or less, this thing's been in place, so it's it's kind of, you know, stuck fast. So you just got to go around and pry it a little bit until it frees up, you know. And then once it frees up, you'll be able to pull the strip back. You can see the top on the outside. This is uh, one of the screws hidden here that holds this trim piece in place up front. So you can see it. Um, if you can get the screw out without taking the whole back seat apart, it's a good thing. If you can't get it out, or if you drop it down on the fender, well, that's a bad thing. And the screw's right across the back here. Now that all the screws are out, um, you just literally have to just pull up on this a little bit. Just be careful not to bend or break anything. As I was pulling this apart the first time, there was these little clips that were popping off of here. You can see them, they were hiding underneath the trim. So, they hold the little flap in place. So here comes the fun part. Um, 
and spend the next probably hour pulling staples. Old rusty staples. As you work around and start getting the staples out, the convertible top will start to separate from the window. And you see what a mess it actually is. The other thing I do is um, I just put the staples in a little baggie so that way they're not all over the ground. Um, my kids walk out here in their bare feet. So. All right, so I got all the staples out of the window and I just kind of dropped it down for now. I'm gonna take this and just curl it a little bit. And lift the top. Over. Over here. There we go. So now we expose all the staples on the top to get the last of the window out. Okay, so we got the window completely free, and you can see it's sitting down here. Um, just want to show you. Right here, this stuff, um, I'm guessing it's some kind of protectant or tape or whatever. Uh, so i got a fix for that. I think I'm just going to use regular black electrical tape and run it right along this whole edge before I put it back together. Um, even though I had taken off the trim on the outside, I still put tape down to protect the paint on the car. Uh, I've got all the staples out. The window is ready to come out. be where it's leaking. So next I have to get these staples out all the way along. All right so here I'm work, working on uh, day two. Um, really it's about two hours in taking the top apart on the car. Um, I had to stop for dinner and you know get late so I was kind of packing up for the night. Um, so today I'm working on getting the rest of the staples out of the window here and you know then i gotta get the other one fit and ready to put back in so just I'm going along i use a screwdriver and, and pre-pull the each one up a little bit and uh, just make it a little faster to go along and just pull the staples out all right well that's a whole mess of staples that's pretty much every single staple from this entire removal and now I've got the rear strip free here, so uh, on to what I got to do next. So um, after we got all the metal strips off and all the staples out, I've taken and laid the old window on top of the new window. And the reason being is, is the this isn't being done the same way that you would normally do a convertible top because I'm leaving some of the stuff in the car. I have to get this aligned pretty closely to uh, get this in place. So pretty much what I have to do is I have to cut these notches where the bolt holes are. Um, I have to align it as best I can all the way around. I pretty much laid one on top of the other, aligned as close as possible. As you can see, the new top has dots marked on it so that's the center point and you can see the old top somebody had used a crayon or marker or chalk or whatever this is and I line it up with the original dots or the dots to the new one so try to get it as aligned as close as possible you know seam to seams all the way around so I gotta go about marking everything out to cut the new top So I've lifted this up and transferred patterns all the way along and also this edge. I've gone about marking for that edge also all the way along. So I've got everything where I pretty much want it. What I've done, and I just showed you in a previous few seconds, 
um, I had the two laying on each other to try and make these marks as close as possible. And, and if you, when I had them laying on each other, the two windows were identically like together where they were at, and the top edge here was where it's supposed to be, and these outer seams were extremely close. But when you came down here to this end, on both sides, it was close but not accurate. And then when I transferred everything from one to the other, where the metal bar is going to come out at is on one side is close to in line but doesn't follow the dots that came on the tops. On the other side, it's way off. So you really can't use this as a, a guide, what they put on here from the factory. So, And this is not a factory original top, but... This is really a case of I had everything aligned center to center and, you know, something's off here somewhere, but I'm not taking any chances. I have to literally measure four times cut once and uh, staple it all together. So, you know, it's just time consuming. But the reason this is time consuming is not like when I first started with the top and just was like, oh, I'm putting the top on new window, new top, throwing it all in one time and nailing it, uh, stapling it all together and then stretching it correctly over top here i'm just replacing the window and because i'm just replacing the window i have to make this window where everything lines up as close to the existing window so when i go to staple it back to the original convertible top on the car that it all stretches the same or close to the same this is going to give a little more because it's newer material than what's on the car but it all has to be pretty darn close so it's it's time consuming you know, right now I got three, three and a half hours into this project and, you know, I'm not done. I still got another at least two hours. This is, this is an all day project if I were to start to finish, but I got to break it up into pieces here and there when I have time. So now it's just getting this to the point where I can staple it together. And like I said, it's, it's literally measure, mark, cut. It's all multiple check, check, check. You don't want to cut it and turn around and throw away a $220 window. So that's it. Let's get working. Okay, the other thing is, is you don't want to, when you, when you go to put this in, you gotta make sure you put it the right way. You don't want it like this, and then spend the time stapling it all together, and here, here it's got to be this way, because it, it sits in the car on an angle, curves around, so it's got to be in exactly correct, because you put this in wrong, and staple it all together, you're going to cry. So, when you go to put this in, you know, this center mark from their marks is correct. And you can see where my marks were at. So I'm just lining it up to the center hole and bringing it up to the edge of my mark. Got the center hole and mark, and I'm going to clamp it. So that's clamped. And I work my way around to the edge. And it's it's kind of stretched to where it's got to be. Throw another clamp on it. Right. So now I get ready to staple it. So I, I've done my checking and rechecking. It's been triple checked, quadruple checked. I don't know, but uh, now I'm gonna make the cuts so that way the studs can actually go through. I've, I've drawn, I've, I've traced all the old the top to this. Um, but I'm going to cut this out now, so that way the studs will be able to go through the actual so the piece of metal that ties it to the car. So this is what I'm doing now. So. some black duct tape here on the end to uh, just because it's kind of a sharp corner so I'm just kind of backing it up so that way it doesn't wear through the convertible top at some point in the future so and uh, don't forget to take this piece here and just stretch and staple it on the other side of the edge here <laughs> uh, 
Um, what you want to do is just go along and make sure there's no staples anywhere in here that are really sticking up high. You, want, you don't want them really sticking up at all. You want them to be as flush as possible, but don't overly pound it where you punch through the convertible top with your hammer. Just kind of make the, make sure they're they're flat. All right. Um, don't forget to put this rubber piece back in. Uh, I'm sure it's meant to be here for um, preventing the two tops from chafing and wearing here. So put this back approximately where it went. Staple it in place. Don't forget it. Before I put this back on, don't forget to tape. I, I double it, two coats of duct tape, did it on both ends. And make sure you put it in correctly because you see the spacing and the holes are different. So there's only one way it can go in the car, so you don't want to staple it on incorrectly. So, all right. I'm trying to do is make some marks so I can get a reference to get center. I'm doing like a 10 inch mark. Ten inch in. And then I get my cameraman to help. Camera woman. woman. Sorry. <laughs> so I figured center, which brings it out to being about 19 and a quarter here. Which is pretty much in line with this screw. So that's the center point on the top so we're gonna line our window. Uh, all right, so what I did here is uh, this support strap for the convertible top on the other side was pulling off. On this side, you can see the difference in the staple size. These are the ones I just put in. These are the factory ones. But if you run your finger along, you can actually feel some of them they're sticking up, so you got to make sure you tap them back down. Because if you don't tap them back in and get them all flush, you'll feel that in the convertible top. Like like right here, you can see this little bump. That's that's a staple starting to push up. So you just want to make sure they're all flat. Remember earlier in the video, this uh, stuff that's all over the place, black stuff. It was all along here, the coating, so I'm just going to use regular black electrical tape and use that to replace that coating. Alright, well we're getting ready to put the top back in. I'm just one last look at how everything looks. The rubber protectors in place, you know, all the lines and grooves and everything that I drew all match up. And I put plenty of staples in because you want to make sure that you have enough staples to hold everything all along. So, we're ready to put it in. Alright, so I, I've got it centered with my mark on this side. I left the excess, but you can see my, my marks here of where the original top came and where the new top is. But this is all centered, so I'm just going to lightly clamp it here so it stays. While I line up the rest of the top. Staples. All right, so as we're getting the window set in place, I dropped one staple in here. Um, I have my alignment for the edge of the bow. Um, and my alignment here it keeps sliding a little bit. I don't have it clamped too tight. I don't really want to put any marks in the, in the actual material. But as you get it in, make sure there's no real wrinkles. Even though when you attach everything and you put the top down, or uh, latch the top up, it's going to stretch this a little bit and the wrinkles should disappear, but just make sure you don't have any obvious wrinkles. So, you know. Alright, um, I've opened the latches on the top, relaxed it a little bit, and we're sliding the window up in place. So what I've done here is I've put a couple of these in place to hold the top 
I lift this up so when we go to put it back down, it'll pull straight and tight. But what I'm doing now is I'm getting these in place temporarily so I can pull this taut on the corner. So what I've done is this is in place holding this top in and the reason I did this is because this top, if you step over here, you can see you're not going to run the staple straight along here. The bow, the top bow is right here so you're going to want to bring the staples down along so I'm going to stretch this a little bit to bring it taut. staples in it. Alright, as you can see, you got the line going here on the bow and it's not straight so that's the reason this was in and uh, you can see now I'm filling in the spots. Don't be afraid to put a ton of staples in here. Just make sure that they're flush when you're done. Okay, so now we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. Um, the last thing that's really left is I, I had left down in here are little cables that um, hold down the side. It uh, keeps the side of the top from flapping. I left them hooked up. So it's a little tight in here on the top. It's a little tight, but you just kind of give it a little bit of relax so this moves now you want to curl this under to reveal this lip this lip has to be stapled in place I'm just gonna stretch it down a little bit stretch it down a little bit and work your way across Good. All right. All right. So back to tapping these down. Uh, make sure they're all flush. Some flush. Ready? All right, so now what I'm doing is releasing the top, uh, the, the back window again, off the rear. Letting it down. Trying to get out of here. Because I have to curl this back over. And staple it. So, now we got this out. You take and lift the top. Oops. Lift the top. Just a little bit. So I can stretch this back over. over. You gotta staple this whole edge back to the top. Alright, so um, I had to pause the video for a second. Uh, we had to not run out of tape. So what we're doing now is I had to clamp this. It's kind of difficult to hold um, one-handed. Uh, I'm gonna put some staples in here. And then I gotta work my damp way around the uh, side. So. You're gonna put a lot of staples in this because it's really it's the main top. So, all the way around, get this lined up. And you're gonna probably hit other staples underneath because uh, 
There's a bunch of staples that belong to it. So. Anyway, so you can see some of the staples are hit, so I'm just going to pull them out. Okay. okay, so we've got the staples in here on the top, the back window area. Um, now we got to get this side piece attached. So we get it lined up to where it was back, you know, way back when. Get it lined up and try and get some more staples in it. Hitting staples underneath. All right, we're gonna pause. You got one out of three. It's not bad. keep stapling here and we'll get back to this okay so um, getting the other side in place just double checking but you know this this will line up along the edge of the window uh, I'm getting it in place because here's the hole where the studs go through and you can see where my marks were and this is the edge of the metal strip underneath so you just have to bring it down to approximately where it was following everything to where it was originally at and we're gonna put all our staples in and work our way down this side get ready to finish up um, so really what's left now all everything's nailed all the way around and we make sure this flap is up so we can curl over the fender I'm going to go inside the car and put everything in place put the top back over the studs and tighten everything up I right, put some uh, soft um, pads, floor pads from, you know, the like garage floor pads, something just to keep the top open so that way it's not uh, sliding back down and tightening itself up and I have to go in the back and put all the bolts in so it'll give me some slack in the rear window. All right, as you can see, the window is laying down here, got some nice amount of slack and you get the metal strips push them in. I'm trying to do this one-handed here. Push it in and put a couple of the nuts on to get started. So that it holds, holds the rails down. And we'll get them all in, get them tight. And work our way around, make sure all the studs stick out. When you get the side strips on, put put the nuts on just a couple turns, so, but not so they're bottom all the way out. You want to leave a little little bit of space between the metal and this, just temporarily, while you put in the, all the ones for the rear. Because as you tighten up the rear strip, it's going to pull everything towards the rear which is going to make this side strip move back a little bit it's going to tighten everything up you know once you get these nuts on just just the first turn or so you still got like another inch maybe a little less three quarters of an inch that's going to pull the strip tight against the body which is going to make this slide backwards so you don't want the side strip on either side you don't want them um tight because it won't make it tighten properly so back to putting on got a bunch more to do okay one last thing is um, as you start and tighten these up I'll have all the nuts on um, you want to start from the center of the car and tighten the nuts up going to the outside edge and then do the other side to the outside edge and then once you get all the center to the outside edge tightened up then go to the outer strips and tighten them up. And don't forget, it's a 13 millimeter, 12 point deep well socket. You need a deep well to get over the 
the head, the button head of these to get down to the teeth. I'm using a um, 13 millimeter flexible head box wrench just to uh, do this. You can use a deep well socket, whatever works. Now that everything's uh, bolted up, um, make sure your defroster wires are through the uh, tray here, this material, and just start snapping these back. Slide your defroster wire back into the little wire pocket here and attach it. Dump the head a little bit here. Um, almost forgot about the side curtain here. So I pulled this down a little bit in the back and that curtain's in place. Now the last thing is, now that the inside's all bolted up, put the clips on for this little flap here on the edge. You just pretty much just push it down. This one, they all went on pretty easy. This one's a little stubborn, so I'm just gonna give it a tap for the handle of the hammer and get it on there. So, that's it. Now to put the trim on the outside. Okay, so now we're just putting the trim back on. Um, you have to put it together so the three pieces are linked together. And slide it down in the trunk. It's easier to, you know, one person to say, to hold the trunk a little bit so that it fits under without scratching the paint. You can kind of just slip it down in. And then once it's in, I already checked to make sure it was centered. So now it's just the point of fucking rubber in under. Make sure you go over. Make sure your your piece is over and then clip it down. And that's in. So we have a screw that's left to put in here. I go around and put the other side on. Same thing. Tuck the rubber because it wants to hit on the top. Just tuck it under. Make sure you get over. Push it down. I'm going to dig out the little screw. Alright, the last thing to get in that holds this trim in place is this screw that goes down in here where my finger's at. Um, it's a bear to get in. You drop it, it's going down in the fender, and either you take the whole back seat apart to get it out or, uh, or you really hold on to it and hopefully you don't drop it. Probably not gonna be able to see much. Let's hold on to that. Awesome. 
to dig a little dentist mirror I had uh, laying around to make sure the holes lined up because my first attempt didn't work because it wasn't lined up. So now it's lined up, so I should be able to get get the screw into it. It's not the best angle in the world, but the screw's going in. I'll do it like this to have to prevent from taking the whole back seat apart. This is it, this is the last of the job, putting screws in across the back. Next will be to put the trunk back together, but not in this video. Alright, so now I'm done. Top, the back window's in. Um, one of the few things about this is, is uh, when you go to do it, make sure the metal strip, because there's a center bolt hole. Um, when I was putting it together, I didn't show it, but that center bolt hole should be lined with the center of your top, uh, the, the actual window center. The window center, the center of the top, the center of the bow, it'll keep it from having any wrinkles from side to side, because when you put that in, you're not gonna be able to adjust it from side to side. The only thing that's gonna adjust is the metal strips on the side as you crank that in as I showed in the video that'll pull them back to, to tighten up the corner of the top here so um, you know we got a nice fit all the way down uh, I'm extremely pleased with the job a $220 window I'm sure I saved myself a thousand bucks uh, in the job and I'd say that pretty much anybody can do this job but I would say that you really need patience because this is not a job you're gonna do quickly uh, you really have to take your time Make sure everything's aligned and centered, and you know, if you're if you're just replacing the window like I did here in this video, and not the entire top, you really have to take your time and transfer the old window to the new window, the size, the shape, so that way it fits properly. Because otherwise, if it, if you have too much slack, this window is going to bow, and if you have it too tight, too little, it's going to be nice and taut, but this, this is going to bow. So you know, you won't have a nice nice fit and top. But I mean, that's it. You know, I just. Uh, Start the car, open the top. You gotta clean it, it's a little dirty, but. this spring right down here this keeps the side down um, if you disconnect this and you drop it down the fender you got to take the whole back seat out to, to get that rehooked up so that's something I did not disconnect uh, you'll know it from earlier in the video but it's in and you know we're good 